the hardest working podcast in Portland, Oregon, man. Play no game. You guys, it's your boy Cartier Bob. Oh shit. <laughs> Welcome to another installment <laughs> of the Play No Games podcast slash show. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay, because you're because you're hating. Once again, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Cartier Bob on the mic again. It's the name that's gonna stay. Oh my god, I thought it was Barty or Bob. Look Wait, here, man. I'm not a part of the uh, Barty or Cop. I'm uh, part of this gang activity, but <laughs> um, are you like passing off to us now to say our name and like an intro? You know what? It hey, hey, I'm Cos. Thank you for <laughs> tuning in. I'm Arthur. <laughs> hey. Oh, and this uh, this great installment of the Play No Games podcast. Uh, it's got a little rewinded today. We're doing a little something different. Uh, we might actually have to flip the script and go to the first segment called play no games before we introduce our guests here and uh let's let robert do it this time and and let's see how it goes okay (laughs) hello (laughs) yeah we flipped the script on him today a little bit (laughs) (laughs) okay that's cute so for all y'all to know is it's cartier bob Oh, put some oh. 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 respect on it. It's CB right now. That's a different lifestyle. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> see, I, you see how it disrespect me? I don't even respond to I disrespect. See it. I see it. I see it. Welcome to our fan favorite segment. Everyone loves this segment. Everyone loves this segment. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do it with Cartier Flair. Ooh, y'all know I'm on cylinder. Uh, and the Play No Games, uh, what, what are we talking about again? Um, what we play no games about. So pretty much, if you're having a good day, bad day, fast day, slow day, just tell us what you're playing no games about. And since I have control over this, you know who I'm going to ask who, who's not playing no games? I'm going to ask AJ. What you playing no games about? Because we want to give our guests an, uh, an example of how to play the game. So uh, I'm playing no games with... um. Netflix, man. Uh, you know, Netflix has been uh, treating me well lately. I, I found a, a new little series on there. Oh, I kind of, uh, I kind of binged a few days and watched a few episodes of this show called Ancient Apocalypse, and it, it kind of had my mind spilling a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, I be, <laughs> you know, I be, uh, I just be on some different stuff. So it was a, a good little show. You know, shout out to Netflix for putting that on there. Uh, you know, that's what I'm playing no games with. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap. Is that the right. person? Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just playing the same. Uh, uh, no. Go ahead. All right. I think <clears throat> because I want to wait for my guy to introduce, but I want to pass it off to our guests, hopefully to be revealed very soon. What you playing no games about today? Uh, Playing no games about reality, man. Um. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be told and people need to hear it. A lot of, uh, you know, untold truths that, you know, um, things that I feel like in my in my life now today um, that I've woken up to and I just don't want to, you know, put the word out there. Mm. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. I have questions. <laughs> 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 so mysterious. Exactly. I was like, all right, you know, tuxedo mask, man. <laughs> 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 you better, you better throw a rose at us, you know, for that's an anime reference for people who don't know. But I'm curious. I got to ask. What have you been enlightened to? Man. Uh, so many things uh, this week. So like just like the, the fathom, the mindset of being successful. Uh, man, a lot of people not cut out for it. I, I'm, <laughs> I know, I know. Like a lot of people, be like, what do you mean? Like a lot of people not cut out for it. You know, people don't realize how much of a sacrifice you gotta put yourself in, and how much you gotta put yourself in a vulnerable state. And I'm gonna tell you right now, most people, especially like men in America, and thinking they want to be rich, they want to be successful, they want to have this. You know, that is girl you don't understand the level of 
like difficulty you got to put yourself in to do that. Um, so I learned like um, very quickly that like it's uncomfortable as hell to be in that position. It's uncomfortable as hell to be like always at this high functioning standard to like push yourself to like do the things that like no one wants to do. Like, you know, like people say like, oh, they do the workouts in the gym or do the workouts and no one's watching, you know, put in the work and no one sees. But now nah, you got to go even further by on that. So you got to be like hitting on all cylinders every single time. And you got to literally be, you just got to be like open to everything. You got to be observant. You got to be um, taking in advice. You got to learn. You got to read, read books, read, read stuff. Um, watch people's movements. Watch people's body language. You got to watch how people. And I really, it really caught on to this. So this is crazy. So it's going to catch people off guard. But, like, you ever looked at how, like, millionaires move around? You ever, like, watched how they, like, they spend their money? They're always in the media Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's like, it's like if you watch them, if you watch millionaires today, they're like kids, bro. They're like the kids. So, like, they're like the teenage kids want to be in the drama, want to be out there telling themselves, like, oh, I'm the... I'm the shit, you know, excuse my language, but. Oh, you, you can know. cuss on here. Okay. <laughs> you can cuss on here. But, like, they here. always talk about, like, I'm the shit, like, I'm this, I'm that, mm-hmm. you know, Got trying em. to get the baddest girls in the, in the club and stuff like that and how they flaunt their money. Yeah. And you watch a billionaire, and it's like watching parents. Yeah. It's like watching your grandparents. If you never hear a grandparent or a parent all through the social media or, like, you know, paparazzi worrying about, like, this and that. Mm-hmm. I can name five billionaires that we only hear about today. And there's so many more billionaires in the world, but no one talks, like, no one knows about these other people, right? Oh, yeah. And I and I want to put this in perspective. Like, this really, this really caught me. How many times do you see millionaires buy these million-dollar cars and, like, these fancy, like, the Lamborghini Urus, the, the mm-hmm. 228 Ferrari? Yes, sir. Yes. Um... And you see them buy the base model. Facts. They buy the base model. Just watch, like, watch the music videos. Watch all these things that they do. How they flaunt their money. Where they buy their money. You know. Um. And then you watch a billionaire, and then they always buying the cars that's ones and twos, ones and threes, buying the rare things the that have takes. value. Yeah. So like, even like these rappers nowadays wearing these bust down watches. Richard Mill watch. So if you buy a Richard, uh, Richard Mill watch and you literally let it sit there in your box and don't put it on, it creates value over time because they only make one of one. So over time, that rarity of that watch, that value goes up by times 10. So we talking about like a watch that probably costs you what? A million dollars? Like 7500 And then like seven fifty. Seven fifty, seven hundred fifty thousand, and then like five years later, it's nine nine million dollar watch. Like who's who's thinking about those things? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like that <coughs> that opened my mind. I'm like, I'm I'm trying to be so successful, and I'm trying to do all these things, mm-hmm. be on social media, trying yeah. to get all these likes, get all these people to follow me and stuff like that. And I'm like, that is a child mindset. And I'm like, these millionaires are chi- like children. Because if you think about like Elon Musk and you think about Jeff Jeff Bezos, they're quiet, but people talk about these people because they have like literally created empires mm-hmm. in front of our faces. Yeah, and they're moving silent. Yeah. So like, if you think about like working hard and thinking about putting yourself in a position, you gotta shut up, dude. You gotta work. No one cares about how much money you got, but people care about what you building and like empire that you have so when i say with like being uncomfortable sometimes like you just got to be in the dark and you got to work and then people want to people see like your cars and they see your you know your house that you didn't built that no one has ever seen before like your palace like everyone looks at like drake's you know his embassy is what he calls it yeah like no no one's house is the same and drake's starting to get it but like like you hear about in his songs 
especially on his new album, there's a song he's talking about um, being on the Vi Vi going back on, like in the Messaloni. That dude is talking about a yacht. Mm-hmm. And, the, and he's talking about a hotel room in a penthouse that no one knows where this place is. And I'm just like, this dude is speaking languages like that goes straight over people's heads. Oh. Like he's starting to get it. Like you got to like start doing the things that no one's ever done and doing it with rarity. So you just move in silence, not being too like loud, not trying to be in the media um, and being quiet. So I think about being successful is just say you got to be quiet, you got to work hard, and then like, like your 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 efforts will just flourish because like no one would like expect it, you know. Everyone wants to be like, oh, I want to be with the dude who got the Lamborghini Urus. I'm like, okay, it's cool. You got a base model car. Mm-hmm. Get a Bugatti. <laughs> like Bugatti just came out of the the, the new Hermes. Hermes edition, yeah. Chiron, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That car is, what, $3 million? Yeah, like 3.5, some 3.8. Yeah. No one, like, you, have you seen a rapper buy uh, it? No, it's always, uh, you know, that Manny guy on TikTok? Yeah, yeah you know, Manny, yeah. yeah, that guy. There's always, there's always those people, man. But it's, like, yeah. yeah that's, that's what opened my eyes up. It's, uh, it's a saying, you know, money talks, wealth whispers. Yeah. And then most of the richest people on earth are private money, too. So it's private billionaires, people who have their own mm-hmm. capital, their own equity. They don't have public companies. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I like that. Okay. Very cool. <clears throat> and after that, we have to introduce this infamous guest of mine right here, the one and only Anthony Turner. <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? So after that, man, it's, it's kind of hard for us to really not get going into, like, uh, the show. And it's like, Give give the people a little bit of who you are, where you come from, your background. Uh, so originally I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, born and raised there. And uh, people don't know this, but I know I don't look it, but I'm 29 years old, so let them know. Uh, still got the baby face and whatnot, but yeah. So I guess you're kind of wondering why I'm here in Oregon. Uh, so I moved to Oregon to chase my dreams. Uh, I know most people like they choose other states to chase their dreams, but like I saw an <laughs> opportunity for my sport that I play. So I'm gonna hold don't hold me to that, you know. Um, I just saw an opportunity where I was like, I was asked to come here, you know, to play rugby um, at a high level. I was always playing rugby at a high level. Uh, graduated with two degrees out of my school at Linda Williams back in St. Charles, Missouri. Um, graduated international business in Spanish. So mm-hmm. didn't retain too much Spanish, so don't it's okay. <laughs> don't don't <I> either. <laughs> <laughs> don't come at me. <laughs> but uh yeah, so been playing rugby for eight years, man. And uh it's been a journey. I'm gonna say that. And it's took me a lot of places. Uh I met a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of a lot of amazing people along the way. Um, I would say this, that the amount of work I put in the rugby, I still feel like I'm not good enough. And, it, mm. and at that same time, it, it makes me even more hungry to, like, learn more and to do more. And, you know, somebody who's experienced in playing rugby at a high level, like D1 level, um, man, like, I still feel like I'm just, like, a little bit behind, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny when I, when I scored in Atlanta over the weekend, I made us, I, I scored a try and I literally said this to myself. I was like, not good enough, dude, not good enough. And everybody was like, you just dusted the whole team. What are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, that was not good enough. And I was like, like, I'm not, I'm not playing like how I should. Like, I think I should like my standard to myself. And, uh, I feel like I could do so much more and I could be utilizing myself and my skills on the field so much more. And, uh, yeah, man, um, played rugby for eight years, um, moved out here, planning on moving to Texas. So if you're in Texas, hit me up. I'm be in Austin. Um, be moving out there in a few months. Um, yeah, uh, rugby's crazy. You can follow me on Instagram. I also do personal training stuff and nutritionist stuff. So if you need help with that, Getting the gains in, 
uh, reaching your real lifetime results. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely help you out there. But yeah, it's been it's been a journey. I've been here for a year. Um, met even more amazing people. Had some a lot of crazy opportunities to um, get myself better in my own craft and become a better human being every day. One percent better each day. There you go. That's my task. Now I'm curious. You had mentioned so you played rugby at a high level. Or to, you came here to play rugby at a high level. Now, someone who, like, I understand the game of rugby. I don't understand the leagues of rugby as well. Mm. So, North America, I know there's the, the like, the, there's an the English Premier League mm-hmm. or for rugby. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it in North America? What is it? Is, is so that, like, the so league? the league here? Yeah, or, like, what what it, are you kind of, are, are you on a team? You know, like, how does it so kind of work? Currently, I'm not on a team. Um, basically moving around like a free agent. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, just seeking out any opportunity that I can, just mm-hmm. traveling. Um, playing pickup tournaments and stuff like that, just yep. trying to put my name out there and, and expose myself. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Put the hair on your You're chest, good. huh? <coughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, <coughs> I would say, uh, so the league here is MLR. MLR, okay. So Major League Rugby. Mm-hmm. Playing here, it. How do I say? I say playing here is different than playing overseas. So when you it's play like the MLS. Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> rugby average. So average players don't play rugby until their high school stage. So they have here played. or yeah here, here in yeah mm-hmm. so most Americans haven't played since high school yeah so they started in high school yeah whether you go overseas most of them kids play since they were six in youth academies and whatnot so right? unlike American football here where mm-hmm. you can pick up the game and learn the game you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying and it kind of naturally comes to you yeah rugby's different so like rugby you you start it wherever you are in your life mm-hmm. and then you constantly are learning. But the earlier you start in your life, the better you are later yeah. on. So, like, that experience carries over. So, you kind of understand the game. So, like, when you watch, like, international kids on the field versus an American, you can just tell, like, like he's going he to tear it up. Yeah. It's, and he can be skinny, you know, heavy set, bulky, whatever it is mm-hmm. on the field. Like, that kid is going to outplay the majority of the Americans that's on the field. Yeah. Now, I'm not doubting American talent, but at the same time, like, yes, we are one of the top countries that can produce, you know, athletes and have the most talent out there. Um, playing at a high level here is completely different. Like, if I was to go overseas and, like, play in, like, South Africa, like, I'd probably be, like, not as good as I think I should be. Like, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't be even close. Like, I'd probably be – so, like, you know how we like have, like, first side, second side – Sometimes third side here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, nah, they have like seven sides. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like I'd probably be like bottom six, bottom yeah. five, you yeah. know. So um that's where I like put my skill level at and that's kind of where I hold my set standard at. So like if I was to play right now and I was playing against like national players over there, mm-hmm. I guarantee you I'd probably be on the f- like the fifth side or sixth side. Yeah. So and that's just being being honest with myself and what my skill level is. So. Of course. No, sounds very similar to the problem the U.S. has with soccer right now, too. It's like it's an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. It, too many sports in America, first off. Too many – you're competing against, you know, American football, baseball, mm-hmm. uh, basketball, all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, you know, is the rugby's, the lacrosse's, the, the tennis and all this. And that's why, like, Europeans still beat us up, that type of stuff. But, no, very cool. Talk about your, uh, cause I know you went to a pro combine last last year, no, or, this year or this year. Talk about just talk about that experience, cause I know like we always hear about the NFL combine and baseball combines and all that, but we don't really like rugby is 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 a a growing sport in the United States. Like we just we just fathom. So like talk about that 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 combine experience. Okay, so the combine <laughs> that I went to is called the Rugby Showcase. Mm-hmm. So that's where a hundred top level athletes come together and they trying to compete for a, a contract. Um that's outside of the draft. Um so we're trying to all compete for, you know, a contract or getting looks at, you know, from scouts or even actual MLR players who are there to like 
kind of scout for their team. Mm-hmm. So it was it was hosted in Denver, Colorado, um, at University of Denver. So we played on the the whole combine took place on their turf field. Um, and it was you know, everybody was hot that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of key factors, you know to look at here that people don't realize. Um, So altitude. Yeah. So, you know, you could be putting in work here uh, in Oregon where it's like, I think we're about 400 feet above sea level. Um, And then you go to Denver, it's like 3,000, 4,000 feet above sea level. So that altitude, that lower level of oxygen, yep. it really takes in factors. Um, So um, your fitness has to be on point. Yeah. Um, now I say for myself, my fitness wasn't as on point as I would like to, to mm-hmm. be. Um <laughs> but I had other attributes where I, I felt like I, you know, took well in. Um, like we did a forty forty meter dash. So um we actually had professional in, uh NFL um combine experts who came in to do all the testing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like your vertical, your forty Forty yard dash, but in rugby it's a forty meter dash, so it's a little further. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting um a four eight six in my forty meter Sheesh. dash. Yeah. So I was, Sheesh. I, <laughs> I was kind of moving. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and at the time when I got there, I was two hundred pounds. So yeah, okay. two hundred pounds of muscle moving, that's pretty quick. Um, so people I was pretty, and people listen over it. Forty meters is quiet. It's yeah, v- long, much longer than forty yards. People oh, hear, absolutely, people hear four eight and a forty. That like, that's kind of slow, bro. Yeah, no, that but is like, no. forty meters is stupid 40 meters long. Is yeah, stupid far. Um, so yeah, I got four eight six in my forty meter. Um, and then I ended up getting like thirty, like a thirty eight inch vertical. Okay, um, so it's pretty good for standpoint and i'm six foot so uh i was pretty happy about that just getting you know 38 inches off the ground that was pretty cool um we also did the you know the bench press test yeah i didn't take part in that that was optional yeah um rugby players we don't have to take part in that yeah because <laughs> it's not really needed um but it definitely um we wanted to put up numbers to see like how we could compare to nfl players mm-hmm. Um, overall, I would say the experience was great, but it was hard, dude. I'm not going to lie. Like the heat, the altitude, and then like it was 90 degrees there, like in the air. Yeah. So, and then it was, we were playing on turf, so it's even hotter. So it was like 20 degrees, even more on the field. Yeah. And then we had to do a Bronco test. Now, most people don't know what a Bronco test is. It's Mm -hmm. basically like suicides for us rugby players on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that shit is hard. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that shit is hard. <laughs> that shit is so hard. So you run a twenty, the forty, and sixty. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. twenty back to the baseline. Twenty know. meters. Twenty yeah, meters. Twenty meters out. Okay. Yeah. You come back. <laughs> run out to forty meters. Come back. Disgusting. Go out to the sixty meter. Come yep. back. Do that five times. Now, good time for that is for back. You want to be like low, low fives, like low four forties. So you want to be like four forty, four four fifty at most. Yeah. Um, for like a forward, like a bigger heavy set guy. Yeah. You want to be at least fives. Yeah. Um, if you can get any lower than that, crazy. Um, if you a small player like a scrum half or a fly half, mm-hmm. you they looking at you to be like around four thirty, four forty. Yeah. So like, there's time brackets in there for you. Um, now I'm not gonna lie, I ran that f- that Bronco. And I ran it here, and I had a four four eight. So I ran it in four minutes and forty eight seconds. I'm like, all right, I should be good. Mm-hmm. I get there, and I ran this mug in five minutes and fifty seconds. Oh mm. shit! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not fit as I thought I was. Yeah. And I went in there with, you know, like any other player, so confidence. I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna kill it. Yeah. Nope, I didn't. And I, and I I was disappointed in myself, but at the same time, that was one of the things that that was my drawback. Like I a lot of, this on the web. <laughs> um, I had one of those as my drawback. So like a lot of coaches, was like you need to get your fitness up, and you you needed to you know work on a little bit of your skills as far as like quick ball movement, 
So yeah. I was like, as soon as you get the ball, look for an option, throw the ball. Boom. Yeah. Um. So that was one. That was my only two errors that I had the entire combine. And man, I went home and I was pissed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was. I I got off that plane and I was on a mission. I didn't say nothing. So mm-hmm. when I got home, I'm just throwing this half ball against the wall, like 500 times. Yeah. Each mm-hmm. side, just throwing this ball. I mean, it's slamming against the wall. Mm-hmm. And people like thinking I'm angry at the gym. It's like, no, nah, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to put in this work. So yeah. like, I told myself I will never have somebody doubt my fitness ever again. And I, so I started doing this uh, fitness um, thing where I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eat clean, and I'm just gonna run as much as I can every single day. Um, and then I ended up doing this uh challenge called 75 hard mm-hmm. now most people don't hear about 75 hard and they're like oh like it's a fitness challenge it's not a fitness challenge it's a mental yeah. challenge so like 75 days um 75 hard is 75 days of you got to do two workouts every day one has to be outside one has to um and they both have to be 45 minutes mm-hmm. you can't can't change it so one of them has to be outside, rain or shine. It does not matter. Cold, it don't matter. You got to do it outside. Uh, you have to read 10 pages of a non-fictional book. Drink one gallon of water. Take one progress photo per day. And then also at the same time, you have to, um, what else is it? I feel like I'm forgetting one. Um. Oh, no cheat meals, no alcohol. So seventy five days looks looks easy on paper, right? Yeah. Nah, <laughs> I just finished yesterday. Okay. <laughs> and let me tell you, oh. seventy five days. So I committed to my seventy five um hard that I was gonna run every day for forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. One of my workouts was gonna be outside, and I was gonna run for forty five minutes. Yeah. When I say my fitness. My mindset, everything changed. People around me changed. Uh-huh. Like, you know how people say, like, money changes people? Nah, 75 hard, it changed people around you. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> like, people yeah. were upset that I was doing this challenge. Yeah. And um, even, like, my ex-girlfriend, she was upset. She started feeling some type of way about me doing this challenge. Like, she was like, oh, you think you look, like, you know, you too good to, like, drink or like do all this stuff and you just doing this challenge for yourself. I'm like, I am doing this for myself. And it was actually making me happy. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so doing this challenge, like I, I started to realize who I really was and what I was capable of. And I got hungry every single day. And I was man, like 10 days in, Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, this is it. I'm set. I'm sold. 20 days in, I started seeing my body change. And I'm I'm just changing. Mm-hmm. And I could feel it. My mindset was changing. 40 days in, it was getting hard. It, this, this is when I was starting to crack. I was like, all right, bro. Like, <laughs> getting up to go to the gym started to become like, I'm hurting. <laughs> yeah. I started having blisters on my feet from running every day. I had to buy new shoes. Mm-hmm. Like, I ran through my 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 Nikes in a, in like two weeks. It was crazy. I was like, this amount of months running, I'm I'm losing it. And uh day sixty, bro. I remember this day. It was a challenge. My work coworkers are in the office with me and they, they order pizza. Ooh. And they order <laughs> crumble cookie, bro. Uh. <laughs> and I got a sweet tooth problem, bro. And I'm sitting in this office, and I can just smell this pizza, bro. And I can smell the cookies. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just, like, eating my freaking my chicken, my rice, and my veggies. And I'm just like, I could just have this one slice. And I was like, no. <laughs> I told myself no. I was like, listen, I, I, I can't do this. So I go out to my car, and I eat my lunch. Yeah. And I come back in. Every time I walk past the break room, I close the door because it would be open up because somebody would go in there and they would just leave the door. I had to close the door to mm-hmm. tell myself no. So, like, if I close the door, it's telling me, like, my mindset is telling me that I can't go in there. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't go in the break room. So I just shut the door. 
every single time. And that was a challenge day for me. So I was I was really fighting myself on that one. And I almost caved. I'm not going to lie. I, almost, I walked in there. I'm looking at this pizza. I'm like, I don't need no fries. And when you don't eat, like, fast food or cheat meals, bro, I'm telling you, your senses are on 10. You can smell it from afar. Mm-hmm. I can smell fried chicken from down the street. <laughs> I was, I was, I was like, yo, this is crazy. But man, that. But back to what I was talking about, that combine, it it exposed me, mm-hmm. and it, it let me know who I was, and it let me know what I needed to work on. Just yeah. like seventy five hard exposed me as far as what I need to work on, and that's like my mindset started to change, and I started to grow, and I was like, I'm starting to realize like who I really could be. Mm-hmm. And I was happy. I was like, I'm I'm actually happy. Like this this is something that I I never thought you know I I was dealing with these issues and I could, I could actually fix these things so quickly. Yeah. So yeah man, like that combine was crazy. Like I recommend anyone who wants to like get to that next level and like see what it's like to be there and like train like an actual MLR player, I recommend you going to do it. I recommend you going out to wherever they're going to host it at and actually put yourself out there. I challenge you to because at the end of the day, you always want to be better. You mm-hmm. always want to be a better athlete. You always want to make, you know, you want to be that a- athlete that creates those highlights and stuff. Yeah. And you want to say, like, I was proud enough to say, like, I made it, you know. And uh, uh, for me, um. I always wanted my kids to just like look up to me in some way that I was a leader, but also I stepped out of my own comfort zone and got myself to a position where it brought me success. Not necessarily like, you know, the million dollar, uh, billion dollar success, but like it brought me success to my life where I felt, I, I felt compelled to do it. Yeah. And it was a passion of mine. So, um, it's always a passion of mine to throw my body against someone else and just, you know, Play the roughest sport in the world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it was crazy, man. I'll tell you that. It was it was well worth it. No. Oh sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask you, so it seems like you're you know, you're kind of playing catch up with rugby and competing with everyone that's played it for so young. I was curious, what sport did you grow up playing and what made you switch to rugby? <laughs> so I grew up and you know it's funny, I, I didn't grow up playing a sport. Okay. So mm-hmm. My family, I come from an athletic family. Mm-hmm. Um, brothers play football. My auntie and cousins, they all ran track. Yeah. Um. So I was like, okay. I realized that I was a kid, I, I could run fast. I was like, okay, well, I'll try track. You yeah. Know? And uh, let me backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up a dancer. <laughs> so oh, I, okay. I dance it's from the age of three. I was I was real good at dancing. Okay. So like Very cool. watching Chris Brown, you know, Michael Jackson, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, like that was me. I always wanted to be like a part of a dance crew. Mm-hmm. Got a chance to do that, which was crazy and during our era that they don't exist no more. <laughs> and uh so ended up I actually ended up doing that professionally. Um okay. for a short por- period of time. And uh yeah, and so I switched over. So I, I was like, okay, I made it here and I'm I'm kinda done with the dancing life as far as like professional life i i have a passion for it but i didn't feel like there was a longevity with it mm-hmm. yeah. so i switched over to running track so i would go to track and in high school i'm just running yeah I'm, my coach is like all right we're gonna get you like to a d1 school and i was like i don't know like i ain't i don't know what d1 is at this time yeah yeah Cause I really didn't hear about college until I got into high school, which is crazy for some people. So I really didn't look at college because one, I didn't come from like a fortunate family to be able to pay for school or like, I like, I got the free lunches in high school and you know, you know, I come from section eight home. So Mm -hmm. having the money to pay for college wasn't even a thing. So, um, growing up, I always wanted to feel, I always felt like I could do something that I wanted to make my parents proud, but also that I wanted to achieve something that like never was thought of in my family. So I was like, I'm gonna just go for track. I'm gonna just do it. Yeah. And you know, I ended up getting injured. Mm. This is how I get injured. So I'm my coach. His name is Walbrink. He would always take us to, uh, 
like the big colleges, D1 schools. So he would take us to like Mizzou or KU. Mm-hmm. And he would take a small group of us kids in high school to go train with these actual D1 track runners. Mm-hmm. Now, cool. I'm telling you, they flying. <laughs> but we ain't far off. We ain't, we yeah. ain't far off. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we, we close. We just need to work on some tweaks, some skills, and, you know, and how to run. And you come from a track background, so, like, you understand what I'm talking about. So I'm in – we do we do this training block, and uh, I forget what it's called, but he had us in four pods on each corner of the track, a and relay? we was like a relay. So we was to run three hundred meters, bro. okay, and you was to not let the team behind you catch you or pass you at any given point. If if the one player, if one of those track runners ran past one of your players on that team, that person had to run a full four 400 before he called the next relay run Mm. and it was like i kid you not it was probably like a minute a minute half rest so you have to run the the 400 meter in under 50 seconds to get back to your group and then be ready to run again i remember we ran this and i'm i'm like i'm booking it so I ended up getting passed by somebody because they just thought they was going to challenge me. But this dude, I mean, I ain't, he left me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He left me. <laughs> I, I And then my coach he called me out. He's like, run that 400. So I run it, and, I, and I'm and i in lane one. And so I'm running around the track. Everybody's watching me. And I'm just trying to book it because I just know, like, I'm not good at 400 meters. I'm a sprinter. So I'm not a distance runner. So I'm I'm pushing it. Get around the first 100, past the second 200, come around that third 300, and I slip on some loose track, bro. No. And I remember my left leg just went out from under me, and my right leg just, like, kind of just stretched, mm-hmm. and I just felt my my groin just pop, uh, yeah. and I collapsed. I collapsed instantly. It was like, it was like as if someone shot me. <laughs> and sniper. I just I just felt this pop and I just like I just collapsed and I was just on the ground just like holding my leg and I was just like in pain and my coach just walked over there literally walked over there he didn't even run walked over and he goes what happened I, was like, I don't know I was like I'm in pain I'm I'm crying I'm tears rolling down I'm in pain yeah and uh, and that's when I I knew I I couldn't run I got up and I couldn't even walk. Like I, I, I was hobbling like a dog up the track, and uh, that's when I realized I was like, "This is my first injury," and like, this is like, it was like detrimental to me because I was like, "Do I come back from this? Like, what happened to me?" Like, so I went to the doctor. They told me like I really like pulled my growing, so it take like six months to heal. I'm like six months. I was like, "You kidding me?" Yeah. I was like six months in track, like. Not running is huge. Yeah, yeah, that's like never coming back. And I'm like, me being stubborn, I was like, nah, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take it easy. So I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk. <laughs> I'm walking on the track, trying to like just still put in work. And I'm out there with my my team, and they're like, Aunt, just take it easy. I'm like, no, bro. Like y'all don't understand. Like I could, like in my head, I'm like, I come from a broke home. Like I'm broke. So, like, y'all got it easy. I don't. So, like, this whole sit on my ass shit ain't finna fly with me. So, I started putting in work three months in. So, I felt like I could run. I could jog at that point. So, three months in, I was like, oh, I could jog. And then I pushed it again. And then I just pulled it again. And I was like, this is it, bro. And my coach was, like, pretty rude about it. So, he was like, all right, bro, you wasting my time, like, you just keep being injured. There's no point in you being on this team and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, well, fuck you then. <laughs> okay. So I quit. I quit. And yeah. I didn't play sports for like three years. Um, and I went into a full-time job after I graduated high school. I started working at UPS. And I was, I just felt like something was still in me. I could just tell that someone was still in me. So mm-hmm. um I ended up healing. I I could run fast again. I was like, all right, I still got some wheels. And then I I'm I start. I was like, 
going to work, and I just felt miserable of where I was at, man. So I was like, all right, I'm going back to school, bro, because this ain't it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm like watching people pass by me like, oh, I wish I could have been this. I wish I could I mean, if I was this in high school, man. I'm like, all right, I ain't going to be this dude. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to get on my high horse and start doing some stuff. So long story short, I quit my job at UPS. I start school. Yeah. And I started as a freshman at 21 years old. Unheard of, but mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna get my yeah. education. So, start school, and I met this dude named Ahmad. Now Ahmad is Guyanian, so uh, he's Guyanese. So yeah. he's from Guyana, and uh, he played international ball. So he got some caps on him. You know, he hit me up. He knew I could run fast. You know, I played sports. And he's like, "Eh, come play this pickup game with us." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Bro, I don't know anything about rugby. What are you talking about?" He goes, he goes, bro, come play. It's touch. I was like, all right. So we not tackling? He goes, yes, it's just touch, bro. It's two-hand yeah. touch. I was like, all right. He's like, I was like, I don't even know how to throw this ball. So he like, bro, if you catch this ball, just run straight, run fast as you can. If you go down, just point the ball towards me. I was like, all right, easy instructions. Bro, I take off, and I leave everybody. And everybody's like, oh, he's fast, bro. And I was like, I'm, I'm fast. But I'm not as muscular as I am right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was skinny. Yeah. So, of course, I'm fast. So, I'm like, all right, bro, I, I like this sport. I'm like, it's different. So, I like, I'm like, bro, when the next touch? And he was like, he's like, bro, you really like this game? And I was like, yeah. He's like, bro, just come try out for the team. And I was like, all right. So, I try out for the team. I asked the coach. And he was like, you got any experience with rugby? And I was like, no, but I can learn. I'm, I'm easy at executing if you just tell me what to do. He goes, all right. He's like, but you gonna have to like earn your spot here. And I was like, bet. Next thing I know, I'm playing like the next few years, high level D1 rugby. Mm-hmm. Never before seen. So I'm playing and I'm not as good as the other players. I never made it to like the first side, but I was good enough to be like, you know, everyone knew me, like, oh, you got skills. Yeah. So I had to work hard. So like out Saturday, I was playing club teams. Mm-hmm. Playing on club teams, trying to work on my skills left yeah. and right. Just playing like I played on D3 teams where I know I would get a ton of time to play on the field. Mm-hmm. Work my way up D2 teams and then switched over, started playing with my team D1 level because I got up to the skill level. Yeah. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm out there playing, man. And that's kind of like how it kind of just like progressed from there. So yeah. like eight, eight years ago, I never would have thought I'd be here. I yeah. never thought I had like opportunities that I have now, and it's crazy. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still trying to become a better athlete. Uh, I met a lot of amazing people. Like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't rough for rugby. Like I wouldn't yeah. be right here if it wasn't rough for rugby because I wouldn't have met him. I wouldn't have met you know people in Oregon. I wouldn't been asked by coaches. So yeah. like when I say it takes you places, it takes you places. Of course. Whatever your craft is, it's gonna take you wherever you wanna go. Regardless of you regardless of you being an athlete or not. Like whatever your craft is, it's going to take you wherever you wanna go. Hundred percent. Yep. And you don't even have to try. Like you don't even if you if you good at where you at, like with with whatever your craft is, it's going to take you. Like opportunities are gonna come to you. Mm-hmm. Like I know like people say, like, oh, you gotta like do this and do that. Like, trust me, like trust the process. And you got to love the journey. Love the walk. Don't love the run. Don't mm-hmm. be like all these other, like, you know, young kids where they're trying to, like, get to success as fast as possible. Yeah. Those people don't last long. Like, you hear these like, one hit or quitter is like, uh, <laughs> what's up, girl? Ice Spice Munch. <laughs> bro, she not going to last, bro. She she already only got one song. And that's it. She's gone. Yeah. She gone. Island, like, Island Boys. Not last. <laughs> <laughs> Island boys don't even exist anymore. Exactly. One hit of quitters, bro. People who want to get successful in a quick time don't last. Yeah. That's why you got to love what you do. Yeah. Because it's a long journey. Yeah. 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 For sure. Uh, um, you, talked to, you, you talked a little bit about it. I want to tap back into it. Um, you also have a past in CrossFit. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't... <laughs> 
I did my research as Robert always says. <laughs> <laughs> Number one journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did my research. Uh, you can do a close up on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So you had a you had a uh, past life in CrossFit, and you also talk about this fitness journey. Like <clears throat> tap tap more into some of those those aspects of things. Man, when I say it all started with CrossFit, and like I needed something to like help me sustained strength and you know muscle endurance Mm -hmm. i was i was always looking for something that could get an edge on me Mm -hmm. um so i started crossfit because i'm playing rugby i need i need something to like teach me how to like be athletic yeah at the same time i think crossfit is the best thing to like for rugby players to do because one you're getting muscle endurance you you are learning core strength so mm-hmm. you're getting core strength, you're getting your uh, athletic movements, all your power clean snatches. Those all make you faster. So your twitch muscles are going faster. And the cardio, crazy. So for one hour, you're working out your entire body that you don't even have to do for like two hours because you just do body weights and like jump. Mm. So like, you know how they say like train like an athlete, you'll become an athlete. So, like, CrossFit is the next closest thing to training, like, an athlete Mm -hmm. and, like, not having to pay, like, this expensive, you know, six-figure, you know, school to, like, Mm -hmm. train under an athletic trainer or, like, you know, strength trainer or stuff like that. So, like, I took my time. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and do CrossFit. Now, my CrossFit gym that I was going to um, was uh, fortunate enough to, like, have a CrossFit uh, discount for college students. Mm-hmm. So we only had to pay a certain amount. I'm not going to disclose that because I don't want to get, you know, flagged for that. <laughs> but, like, just know, like, there was an actual school uh, college student discount for it. So it was okay. cool. So it helped me out a lot. Yeah. And uh, I had started CrossFit, I want to say, 20. 2015, yeah. So I started in like 2015, 20, yeah, 2015, and uh, when it was like everywhere, yeah. When he started like blowing yeah, up, yeah, yeah. you know, Rich Froney and Matt Fraser, all yeah, 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 yeah. So like, TV. I would always, and I would take it even a step further. So I would do the competitions that yeah. would be on the weekend. So you doing oh. seven workouts in a day, yeah. So I'm like, I'm just gonna <laughs> throw my body to the wall, so my fitness be crazy. And it helped me out a lot. So, like, I started, like, getting faster. My cardio was crazy. I started getting stronger. Um, And I know he finna, he finna dive into this one because I know he's going to ask me. He's like, when did you start getting muscle on your skin? <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't start gaining muscle and learning my body until, I would say, about four years ago. So, four hmm. years ago for serious. So, yeah, like, I started. So, like. How do I explain this? So, like, I started late. So, like, where I could be right now, if I knew how to properly lift and gain muscle, Lord Jesus, I'd probably be like a Chris Bumstead right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, that started. I did CrossFit, and I was, I was like, this is great because it works perfectly with um, – running on the rugby field because you got to run for 40 minutes on the field. Yeah. And that's that's tiring, bro. Yeah, oh, man. So I, I never really got tired when I was playing. And then I was also playing sevens over the summer. So if you don't know what sevens is, it's 7v7, seven, seven, yeah. seven minute halves, tired field of the yep. rugby field. That's a lot of field for seven players to be on. And not that many people be able to tackle you all the time. So you mm-hmm. got to be able to run, just run. Literally. So – yeah, basically just um, I did that, and um, my fitness uh, and my health, I started, I just I just started learning about my own body, man, before I started helping other people. Yeah. Um, so I started diving into, like, what my body can digest and, like, what my body can, like, do. Um, so, like, for certain people, like, y'all can eat, like, steak and stuff, you know, the beef and Wagyu and all that stuff. It's fire, right? My body can't take it that well. So, like, I will, like, I could eat beef and it just, it stacks on. Like, body fat, everything, the weight, it'll come quick. 
if I eat beef. Mm-hmm. So I cut it out of my diet. Just not because I don't like it, but because of what it was doing to me. Yeah. It was slowing me down that I realized. Now, I'm not saying, like, I don't eat, you know, wheat beef every now and then. I'll have a good steak if I'm, you know, I would at certain, you know, significant other one day. <laughs> I'm going to have my nice steak. So I started eating the lean meats. So I started eating lamb, turkey, yeah. ground turkey. And I'm, I ain't used to be like that. Um, I even kind of, like, slowed down on eating pork. I don't eat bacon. Mm-hmm. So that helped me out a lot because uh, I'm never cutting out bacon. So I don't care what you say. I'm never cutting out the swine or bacon. <laughs> there you go. Um, the bison. You so the bison? Yeah, bison is probably my favorite. So that was awesome. That I learned that my body could actually digest bison uh-huh. way better than beef. Really? Yeah. So what's crazy is even though it's expensive. Costco's going, got the deal on bison. I'm going to say. Costco like yeah. left and right. <laughs> so like. The, the that's a that's a gold member right there, Costco that, special. Yeah, right like there. Costco is crazy. So like I'm going left and right. There's so my much sh- cap going on. <laughs> so, I don't want to keep pushing this button, but you go to Costco. Stop the cap. Wait, 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 wait. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure. No, nope. I, sure. I ain't going to Costco. Yeah, yeah. Don't get no bison from there. I don't All care. Right, I don't eat bison anyway. Energy, okay. I don't, I don't eat bison Your life anyway. would be better if you did. I would not. If we're right. not, the Let's only meat I would probably go back to if I went back to me would be lamb. All right. Lamb's good too. Lamb's good. Lamb's All right. delicious. All right, man. But I ain't E-I-E-I-O. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it's that all happened. My fitness, yeah, everything. Um, so I just started stacking on my life. What I could feel like I could just get better. You know, I do have a question. Um, and my question kind of alludes to you know. Hearing, let's just say, the leagues of, like, how you've transformed your body, the sports that you've played, and I think you'll be the perfect person for me to ask this. You know, I've heard a lot about CrossFit gyms, and okay. I feel like they're cults. And <laughs> <laughs> i got to ask you. Have you ever stepped in a CrossFit gym? I've stepped in one. No, 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 no. Have you ever stepped in a CrossFit gym? I have. Like, full-blown week. No, but I've stepped in a CrossFit gym. See, let me, let me, that, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me I want to ask because you know better than me. Okay. <laughs> so I've had my one experience of stepping in, but I also have other people who were reform CrossFit people and they're like, man, they call you every day. If you miss a workout, they on your ass. Like, tell me about the CrossFit. Yeah. What CrossFit damn gym they going hey, to? Look, hey, look here. It's Portland. Listen, <laughs> so, it's, it's Portland, but I ain't never in my life went to a gym and I didn't feel like it was a home. Mm. I mean, like you, you can't just go in no gym for one day and be like, Oh yeah, that sucked. That shit was trash. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know how people could just die and just, you know, go home. Nah. Like if you actually go to a real CrossFit gym, I'm talking real CrossFit gym where they actually, the community is crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I can show you clips, punk clips. Like the support, <laughs> That's PG the support, the support. No, 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 no. Not, not like calling you like, hey man, you gonna come to the gym? Da, da, da. Nah, <laughs> I'm talking like you in the middle of a rep, bro. And let's say you miss a deadlift or you miss a clean. You know, yeah. Mm. They're like, no, 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 no. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. They, they chant you on, bro, because they want to see you succeed. That's what people need. Mm. That's what a real CrossFit gym is. So they like, it don't matter how hard you work. It's as long as you stay moving. That's a real CrossFit gym. So that's how you know if you're in a real CrossFit gym. If they see you struggling and they come over by you and they cheering you on and and they see you just like taking breaths, <laughs> dying. <laughs> they, I, I kid you not, I went to many of gyms, bro. They all like the, the gyms that I went to, Literally, I'm just saying, bro, just stay moving. Just stay moving. I know it I know it sucks. But you like literally as soon as you finish these reps, you can cry, die, whatever you want, have ice cream, all you want. <laughs> but as soon as you finish it, you'll feel so much happy about yourself. Because they know if you quit on yourself, they know what that'll settle in your mind. Because when you quit on yourself, you settle for less. You settle for the defeat. 
And they don't want you to feel that defeat where you go home and like, man, I should have just, I should have just did that extra rep. I should have did that rep. I should have, man, I should have. And and sometimes you do a rep and you don't do it right, and it's called a no rep. So you got to do it over for it to count. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be like the person that's just like, man, I should have, I should have did those reps correctly and not quit on myself. So like, in a, being in a real community, a real CrossFit gym. Man, watch the CrossFit games. Like, if you really want to know what a CrossFit community is, watch the CrossFit games, especially last year. Like, this year that just passed the CrossFit mm-hmm. games, there was a girl that was carrying a 150-pound uh, sandbag 200 meters. I know a girl. And she and she kept dropping it. Mm. And Noah Olsen, he a famous dude on Instagram. You can follow him everywhere. Dude shredded. Huge. Stands about 5'8". Crazy. Mm. Crazy athletic. This dude stops because everybody else is, like, leaving the event. He sees her struggling. So he walks over there by her, and he's, like, cheering her on. And then next thing you know, 10 other people are, like, behind him cheering her on. The next thing you know, the whole crowd, like, funnels behind her, and she's, like, still struggling with this sandbag. And then you just see her just, like, keep trying to pick it up to finish it, and they just cheering her on. Next thing you know, she finishes, bro. But she was... She was dead after it. But at the same time, the, the the aspect of, like, finishing is so much greater than saying, like, I can't do it. You know, that failure, that 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 settlement of saying, like, oh, yeah, I can't do it, bro. No, I really appreciate uh, you mentioning and saying that because we, um, I, I know a lot of people have, like, a misinterpretation um, of, like, quality CrossFit gyms and what do you say? There are a lot of sharks out there who take advantage of people. Now don't and- get me started about the gyms because I can tell you right now, I don't want you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I will tell you right now, the fitness industry right now, they are fucking watered down, bro. Mm. These personal trainers you see I'm and these so called fitness influences water the fuck down. They don't know shit. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you can see it, bro. Like, watch the people who have results, who have experiences, especially the old heads. Watch the old heads. Like, they don't know shit. They try to come up with these new workouts where you gain muscle. Oh, you do it like this. You do it like this. No, 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 no. You want to know how you gain muscle? You want to know how you get stronger? Progressive overload. If you want to get big, if you want to get stronger, don't start your rep, your set at... Oh, I did. I worked up to one thirty five. You know how people say like, "Oh, I worked up to this weight," and then I'm I'm going on to the next movement. No, don't start. That's where it starts. Where you felt like it was a struggle with that high that that peak weight. That's when you start. That's when your set starts. That's mm-hmm. when the working set starts. That's when the workout begins. People don't talk about that. They always talking about, like, oh, free game, free game, free game this, free game that. Don't get me started, bro. Because <laughs> I, I, I go for some people's heads right now. <laughs> I, I have a CrossFit experience. I just want to uh, I just want to talk to you about My brother used to go all the time. He used to ride his bike three miles, go do a CrossFit workout, ride his bike three miles home. Mm-hmm. And he used to go every day religiously. And so one day he invited me to go. I go with him, first time ever doing CrossFit workout. Do the workout. We run like a mile and a half after finish the workout, run another mile and a half, come back. We done with the workout. Next day, I'm laying in bed, and my brother come knock on the door. <laughs> 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 Don't tell me for to ask you again. He said, you, you ready to go work out again? Uh-huh. And I was like, uh-uh, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't move my whole body head to toe, and I never went back to CrossFit. I tell you, I tell you what, that. yeah, like, it, it's like that. Because when I first started CrossFit, mm-hmm. my body was, it was torn. I was like. I first off, why does my body feel like this? And I've been playing rugby, and I I don't even feel as sore as in playing rugby. I'm like, but my body is like wrecked. Mm-hmm. So it's all about, and then I and it goes into that. But I'm like, I think about that. I'm like, people people should not peer pressure people into going to work out. They should like encourage people to work out. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey man, you. You want to go to the gym with me? <laughs> or, you know, it's the way you approach somebody. The way you approach somebody to go to the gym or to get them to go to the gym, it's the way you 
interact. It's like, hey, bro, I saw you yesterday. You was killing it, cuz. Uh, you trying to trying to get another lift in one day? Don't say today, because as soon as you say today, that person's like, oh, this motherfucker going to ask me every day. God damn, bro. Like, I'm just, I'm dying, bro. You see my ass over here laying. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to get up. Me, I'm coming at you like, hey, man, I saw you killing it yesterday, and I know you dead tired. Let me know when you want to hit up the next workout. People don't think like that. Just like personal training, bro. Like, people don't encourage or speak the way they need to speak. To yeah. Because as soon as the, it's the words, people, people focus in. And it's the amount of respect that you have for somebody. Like, and that respect that somebody will have for you if you, you know, training them. If you don't have no, I would say, if you, if you, ain't, if you ain't built nothing, if you ain't shown the results and you ain't doing it yourself, no one's going to trust you. No one's going to want to do what you want to do. Because it's like, what what, what drawback am I getting from you that you are um, necessarily going to help me? Like, I bet you felt like, bro, you go to the gym all the time. Like, what benefit I need to go to the gym with you every day for? <laughs> like, I don't need to do that. Man, I was I was toe up from the flow up. I couldn't roll out of bed. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't I couldn't do anything. Like I could not. I could move my yeah. whole body. Neck down was torn up. I was hurting. I, feel <laughs> I was hurting like a motherfucker. But uh, this is that moment where we kind of transition and we go to what what we really talk about on this show. You know, we tapped into a lot of positivity and motivation. And really trying to get people to be on a higher vibration and a different mindset. And uh, I think you definitely have touched well into that. But where we get down to the nitty gritty is, uh, you know, um, this this love thing. <laughs> Before we transition, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Can I, can I, are you high? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Why? Uh, you just look high over it there. It is worrying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Sorry. I'm just, okay, but sorry, AJ. Go ahead, okay. Robert. You want to? No, you, no, it's all you. Because <coughs> you usually do this. Yeah. This, are, are you always say, this is my portion of the shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you. this is your feel. I, 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 today, I, today has been an interesting day for me. <laughs> I've actually enjoyed this position. I actually might be taking RJ's job. <laughs> 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 I'm taking RJ's job. <laughs> Oh, uh, you sure? No, you. If you had something, go ahead and tap in. Are you it. sure? Yes, sir. This is your portion of the show where you tap in. You know, I'm still gonna kick it to you, <laughs> and, but I will start us off. But but I'm following your directions. So, you know, a lot of things were said today, and um, it was very interesting to hear some of your answers. And I think, again, you are the most perfect person to uh. To ask this question. (laughs) And it is, you know, a bunch of guys here, right, guys? And, you know, sometimes when we go to the gym, we be working out. We only go to the gym for gains. But sometimes there's that, uh, (sighs) that delicious, uh, nutritious, uh, booty from a woman. (laughs) So I guess what I want to ask is, do you think it's okay to approach a woman at the gym to get the digits to do you think that's a good place? We'll start there. It's gonna upset a lot of people. <laughs> oh, he's got stories. <laughs> do not do n- I mean do not hit a girl up while she's in the middle of her workout. Mm. I guarantee you if you do are not getting a text back. You are not getting a phone call, a text, no follow from Instagram, nothing. That girl will forever notice you in the gym and be like, that's a motherfucker who like talked to me during my set. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> that's basically what these girls going to be like. Bro, if you want to talk to a girl, catch her before she's about to work out. Catch her, actually, nope, better yet, catch her after her workout. Mm-hmm. In the parking lot, or like, oh, oh like that's she's real creepy. Not no, 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 no. Just like as she's not, walking not, to her car. Not as she's walking to her car, but as she is no. literally finishing up, and she's most girls that I've seen are about to like 
prep their, you know, their protein shake as they're about to walk out the door or go get a smoothie from the you know, smoothie bar. Um, but as soon as you see them walking out of the door, let me, let me tell you, it'd be strategic like this. I, for me, this is what I would do. So I'm finishing up my workout at the same damn time, at the same damn time as she is. So if I know, not creepingly, if I know this girl only works out for 45 minutes, shit, <laughs> this is about to be a motherfucking workout today because I'm going to bust this sweat. <laughs> so there's been a time where I have worked out and I've seen this girl at this gym. And I know you, you knew you was going to ask me something like this. So I, and just like, kind of just like say, or just say hi. Just say, hey. Say, hey, how you doing? Every now and then, you just say, hey, how you doing? My name's, in, like, my name's so-and-so. She'll start remembering your name. Don't even, like, holler at her. And then as soon as one day, like, it kind of just progresses. It's like us guy fellows. Like, when you see each other, you kind of, like, see somebody, in, like, at the gym. You're like, hey, man, what's up? Yeah. And then, like, a couple days later, hey, man, what's up? Hey, bro, can you come spot me? Cool. And then that's how we become friends as guys, yeah. right? Yeah. It's the same thing with, with girls. Just say, hey, what's up? Hey, nice set. I saw you squat. That was dope. Are you bench press? I saw you hit a PR. That was dope. It's the little things, bro. It's like the little things every single time. It stacks on top of each other. Because girls going to start remembering your face. Then you remember your name. Then they remember you the compliments that you <coughs> were saying. And you wasn't being a creep at the same time. Bro, you miles. You, you in the bag right there. <laughs> it's easy. But people overthink it. They're like, oh, I need to talk to her now. I need to follow her. I need to follow her on Instagram. Like, 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 like. Slide in the DMs. Fail. I promise you, 100% fail every single time. You Why are you fail. smiling so hard, Robert? What's your name? What's your name? Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Robert's done it. Yeah. That's right. That's Robert. Robert's word day. Robert loves sliding. Do it again. yourself, bro. What's he talking Dead about? Serious. I give you, I say in the amount of time, if you see her a lot at the gym, I give you two weeks. If you go into the gym consistently four days out of the week, that's eight times, bro. You mean to tell me eight times she ain't going to remember your name? <laughs> you, you, I, nah, the consistency. Man. It's the consistency because girls love consistency. I, 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 they love consistency. I was hanging with you until then. Like at the, I was hanging with you until then. <laughs> I, I'm I was hanging telling you. with you until then. Do it. I'm telling you. If Women you, at the gym are different. Animals like they absorb Bro, failures in. into their foreheads. They're like mm, another soul. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they're like finally. <laughs> and I'll just say this: I'm an asshole at the gym. People look at me. Nice. I'm like, don't no. Let me like, <laughs> can I get that? Nah, <laughs> look here. Because let's just say my younger days. When, you know, I was a little chunky, you know what I'm saying? You know, a little shorty broke my heart, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I had to boss up. I did dumb shit. I was like, you know, got thin. Got, but, you know, I, I made some steak at the gym. But now, nah, I'm a, I'm the gym dick. I'm lifting, not putting my weights right, you know. But I wipe myself down. But I think for me, just personally, I, I don't know. Talking to women at the gym I'm is just you, a... Bro. Just Even saying hi. If, I, if you I don't disagree. believe me, if you don't want to try, just watch the dudes that holler at the girls at the gym. And then watch the girls' facial expression after they done with their conversation. Talking about, I've seen... Peep I, game. I, just peep game. I literally watch this bald white man mm-hmm. approach this woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, she was doing the ab will. And mm-hmm. I was doing like the ladders. And I was like... Oh God, Jesus! <laughs> Suicide watch immediately. <laughs> she went up, talked to him, and she looked at him, and then I just saw a sad man. He just shoulders exactly. out low, and I'm just saying, there's no reason. No, just don't even do it. No, man, I say do it. All right, earn your what, stripes. What do you have to lose? I know. Cool. You know how many women there are in the world? You know how many different women there are in the world? Bitch, your gang, talk yeah, your but shit. then what do you, if you gotta see that woman again every time you, you gotta out, walk that walk, you talk that talk. You don't shit, eat, and piss in the same. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you don't hit on your coworkers. 
I'll tell that to him. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right, Robert, are you more of a grocery guy over the gym? I will say this because I don't because once foremost to answer your question, one second. I I am with you. I'm just like <laughs> I'm just speaking as like an old head now. Don't even do it, player. Don't even do it. I would say not grocery store. I'm more like you, we're walking. You know why I said grocery store. Oh yeah, because that's every, every female we've every, had on here every, says that. Every woman's fantasy is me at the grocery store. That doesn't work. If you really want to find a woman, go to Target, bro. That's fine. I was though. really about to go to the home decor. Uh, oh, <laughs> the candle aisle. <laughs> I'm not even capping, bro. No, yeah. You want to find the most beautiful girl that you've ever seen? Go to Target. Literally, in the evening, right after work, in the home decor hour. Because why? Women are always changing their house setup due to seasons. And if oh, yeah. you go into the <laughs> aisle got them. and they want to change the setup. We fucking got them. The aisle has a rotating inventory. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I agree with that. <laughs> and also, I want to say free game. No, Y'all know why I like going to Costco for the samples, right? It's all for something else. <laughs> the moms. <laughs> we're done. I, no, bro, we're the, done. The, 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 <laughs> women, the women at Costco at from 2 to 4 p.m., jeez. The Costco where I go to Costco, their staff, I seen this black girl. Oh, my God. Oh, don't get me started about Oh, my God. <laughs> I, was a, I was about to spit game. I was like, don't you box my stuff up like that. Don't you box up my materials like that, girl. Wait, they boxing your stuff for you? Oh, I was. Where out. you going? I need to go where you going. A hundred and twenty soccer right next to the airport. This beautiful black queen. I almost. Who almost. Ooh, goddamn. <laughs> Since, since since we on this t- topic, go ahead. I, I want to ask y'all a question. Oh, ah. turn to talk. How do you feel about a woman that only goes towards you for your money? Like only looks at you and sees your bank account. Mm. I think this will be a great way to close things out. And you know what? I like the takeover from the guest. <laughs> <I like laughs> He's feeling comfortable. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Who, who, how do you, who do you want us to answer? How do you want us to do it? How do you want to close this out tonight, guest? We going we gonna to close it out? Man? I mean, just want to see like. No, who do you want? How do you how do you want to how do you want to do this? Go ahead, since you. No, no. You want me to really go first? Go for it. God damn. <laughs> I really want an agent. <laughs> All right, let me go. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I mean, I mean, you look at it in like a few different facets, but like mainly, like I mean, they, you kicked them to the curb. Truthfully, like um, I'm gonna be honest. Like if you only coming coming for me for one thing, that means. You're missing a lot of things about you, um, because you shouldn't need me to be. You shouldn't need me to make your day, um, and I don't need you to make mine. So, like at the end of the day, if you coming for my account, that means you only coming for me because you only got one thing, and and I don't like that. I don't agree with it. Um, I don't know. That's just kind of how I personally feel, and I think we have a, a lot of women, a lot of women nowadays that uh. That I have definitely sliding that that way, and I think a lot of it is, you know, with the help of social media, they want to stick to the the lazy aspect of making money. Uh, social media got them in a chokehold. Um, and you know, it's uh, I feel like we have a lot of hmm. Get canceled. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> talk that talk. Cancel. Talk that talk. Cancel, cancel. <laughs> say it with your chest. Uh, you know. Nah, say. I'm gonna swing for the fence, but no you know, more. uh, yeah. At this moment, his comments do not reflect the point of the talk. <laughs> just let it show. I'm, I, just go. <laughs> I just feel like nowadays a lot of women are taking the easy way out when it comes to situation and money standard, especially when it comes to what you can make from social media and all these other platforms, I feel like the need for attention only comes to a certain standard because 
they have this other outlet. And so you just help pay the bills and they make their own money. And I feel like a lot of women come to men for the check so that they can pay the bills. And, and it's, it, yeah. That's and it's, and it's crazy because I, I, I met a chick this weekend oh. and she was like, I'm bougie. Oh, and she was cute. Don't get me wrong. You know, I just shoot. You know, I, I you know I give her about a, a eight out of ten on a, on a scale. You know what I'm saying? But she said I'm bougie, That's and a, then oh she drive off in a 2009 Toyota Corolla. Um, <laughs> she got a long a long jacket, <laughs> long jacket like like long regular sweater hoodie on like. You know, I don't even a, a great person so far. Stop that, the uh, cap. Yeah. Um, but. You know, like in my in my mentality, like you calling yourself bougie, but then the way you live your life and how you present yourself is completely different than the mentality that you carry yourself with. So that means you're looking for somebody to give you the lifestyle that you don't have already. So that's a red flag. If you're doing the red flag things again, that's a red flag to me out the gate. And so it's like it's it's a mentality piece. I think a lot of women fuck up with themselves is like instead of just being comfortable in who they are and in their skin and just represent who they are and you know make your money how you make your money but at the end of the day like don't don't push for something that you ain't got already so I don't know wow I'll play devil's advocate here for a little bit of fun um I just to be clear (laughs) (laughs) click the button click the button (laughs) click the button wait 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 Oh my God, I I, I, I I messed up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Stop the cap. Right, so I do agree with AJ. You know, if it, if you want something legit. Stop the cap. Don't look that way. But if you're looking to have fun, if you're looking to have fun, if you want to have, some, you know, if you want to, that power is really what that comes down to. If, if, mm. if women look to you as a source of money, a lot of the times this comes from, you know, maybe a little bit of daddy issues they want to be taken care of. <laughs> And if you're young, you got that, you got money, you're going to have a lot of power over them. And I'm just saying this as facts. Like, <laughs> so, so I want to say this before we close out. Um, and it made me realize a lot of things. And I, I kind of want to piggyback off this TikTok that I've seen. I think it was Chris Cruz on the po- podcast. And he talked about like how men go after women. We go after versus we use our emotions. Women use opportunity. So they seeking opportunity when they see a man and when we talking to men. And what they meant was, I'm going to dive in this real quick so we can close out. But it, it made me think, like, how many times I've been, in, like, going after a girl and I felt like I felt the vibe. And I felt like, oh, this is rocking. This this chick's cool. Like, she's bad. She's cool. She got a cool mind. I love her mindset. She's ambitious. This, this, and that. But at the same time, I'm like, I never really thought about what the girl is thinking or what the girl's mindset is. So, like, I'm sitting there, I'm listening to this podcast, and I'm like, and he talks about, like, girls seek after opportunity. Mm-hmm. What can they gain or lose from talking to me or being in a relationship with me? So they're not just mm. looking at, like, finances. They're looking at something like, what the, can they learn? What can they gain? Like, what kind of lifestyle I'm going to get? Like, who I'm going to see and who going to see me with you, like how I'm going to look, all these things. I'm like, and it just start unfolding. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, girls really seek after us as an opportunity as far as like, especially when you swiping like right on Tinder and they, when you on Hinge and stuff like that. Yeah. When you don't get that like, it, it automatically make me think in my mind, it's like, oh, you thinking of me as an opportunity. Because mm. I, I don't even tell people like, I'm right at the door being a professional athlete. I'm just like, because if I sell them that, they're going to like, oh, he got money. Where the bins at? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, because girls, like, think about, like, I'm, like, thinking about it, I'm like, <coughs> if girls are looking at us for an opportunity of what can they gain or what would they lose if they get into a relationship? Because if you think about it like this, as soon as you break up with this girl or y'all get through a rough patch, she's already thinking – of a way out. Like she's already thinking of that outdoor plan. 
soon as that first little bad argument, you're thinking of that way out. And at the same time, you can say stop the cap, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you be the first. You guess think, I press you think, that bro, you, think, you think about it. Like, at the same time, like, I'm saying, like, girls look at us as an opportunity. So what can they gain from you? Like, you got a nice house. They look at your car. They look at your bank account. They look at everything. They look about how you carry yourself, how you dress. So these are all opportunities. So, like, they are looking at your personal well-being as far as what can they get from you. And then as soon as that bad breakup happened where they're crying, it's because it's defeat. They're like, ah, I'm wasting my time, and I wasted an opportunity, and I could have gave it to somebody else. What I was going to say is, but as a man, if you, you know, if you are a man making money and all this and you're bringing all these things to the table, that safety net for them, then isn't it more likely if there is a bad breakup that they're more likely to come back? Why would you take them back? No, I'm saying as a man, I'm not saying you have to take them back, but it's more likely that a woman would come back in that situation because they, they miss that safety net. They miss that security. And then you're, you're the one with the power in that situation. <laughs> but and so to kind of jump, kind of answer Constance's question, I feel like it's it's very it's very depending on the opportunity, right? Like if they if y'all split, right, and she finds a better opportunity, she of course she's not coming back. If y'all split and she finds something less than, she gonna try and find a way so that you seek her out more than she seeks you out. And mm-hmm. I think I think it goes back to what he's saying in a, in the sense of like opportunity becomes very important. And I think if men begin to s- speak to women in that sense of opportunity, I think even the tables be a lot different. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm, decided, I'm decided to ruffle some feathers today. We got AJ Tate. You know, you're but, you start thinking like that, bro. But at, but at the end of the day, I don't think like that. I don't think like that. I'm just being honest. But if men, it, but it, I think it's, I, I think it's, we live in a society where I think nowadays where women are starting to make some some good money. And as, as men, if we look to women the same ways women look to men, then things would be a lot different. But at the same time, I'm not looking at a woman like that, bro. Absolutely not. Because I, want, I am glad you said I want, that. I want a genuine woman, bro. Me too. When I say a genuine woman, I want a woman that's got her own shit. And I mean, not like she got to be rich. I got to be rich. I'm saying she got to be like, on her own task. Like, she got her own business, or she got her own stuff. She's successful. She got her own goals, everything. Like, it just has to be that same mindset. Like, I'm working on my own stuff, and you working on your stuff. I don't need to see you all the time, because at the same time, if I see you all the time, I get annoyed at you. Like, that's just me. Like, I don't need to see you all the time. Mm -hmm. So, when I'm seeking out a woman, I want her to be real. I want her to be genuine. She ain't got to have all this lip... Bust down everything. Booty got to be BBL. I I don't really care about that because I can build it my damn self. And I just I just need a real woman. And I think <coughs> real women are lacking in our society right now. I'm going to play double, 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 double devil's advocate <laughs> because you know what. <laughs> Oh, I, I probably can't say that. Mm. No, nah, say it. No, because I'm going to edit it out anyway. <laughs> you might as well say if you edit it out. Nah, I respect all women. <laughs> um, I'll just say, I, even though I can't speak for women because I'm not a woman, um, I just want to say this. I What's say? From what all you gentlemen say, because I'm going to keep it short, sweet, and compact. There are elements to which I I hear what you are all saying. I do not disagree because yes, if you have the money, if you have the money, by all means you can do that. B and AJ had this conversation not on the podcast. Uh, he sent me something and it's about how this one dude was just talking about and about like uh, the best way I can explain it is he was like. I'm always having one foot out the door when I get into a relationship. And what I told AJ, it was like, that's a horrible mentality to have yep. when you're just living your life in pure anxiety where I'm like, this person will eventually hurt me. Why even get into the relationship? If you're walking around with that mindset, and I'm just speaking not just from 
uh, men versus women, vice versa, things like that. Having that mindset is just anxiety. Like, that's truly anxiety because at the end of the day, and I hate saying this, and I'll be the, I'll be a hypocrite, we're all the prize. And in that relationship that everyone talks about where a guy has this and a woman has this or it's flip-flopped, that is just the role of that relationship. And my thing is, for people, for real women and real men really live, is like living in that vulnerability that when you put yourself out there, depending upon who you're messing with, you never know. That could be that person, but when you don't put yourself out there because out of fear of, I'm trying to get this get back, it just poisons the watering well, which we are currently living in. And we're all at fault. Men, women, because at the end of the day, you said this. We want to have that relationship. We want to have those emotions. We're all trying to get something out of all. Like, yes, your relationship will be advantageous. Your woman or whoever you want to date will bring you something. Like, it's it's a cost. Thanos said, it's a risk what's the cost? Yeah. So, well, I clearly Meg the Stallion. <laughs> Call me. I don't trust any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to Tory Lanez. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> I, 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 I delete. Oh god. I, I, I deleted all that music. Now nah, I'm just, no. I no. I really appreciate this conversation because this is how those things happen. Because it's not about proverbially right or wrong. Because you guys aren't not saying anything. I like there. You got to have some worth as a man. Like I agree. Mm-hmm. Like if she ain't putting out, not sexually, but like putting out the emotion, the effort. Yeah. That's your time. That's your resources. Put that where somewhere where it's going to be valued. So now, well, would you like, Oh, wait a second. I can't believe you didn't say this. Oh, Oh my gosh. I can't believe he didn't say this. Where can we find our guests? Please drop your socials. So you can find me on Instagram at, I am Anthony Turner. You can find me on Instagram. I mean, on Twitter as I am Anthony Turner. This has been a, another amazing episode of the Play No Game podcast slash show. I'm Arthur. I'm Koss. I'm Katia and Bob. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> CB. And we out. Peace. I'm a super gang. <laughs> Probably wonder if I think of you. Sorry, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, for the bag that I never had. Yeah, you probably mad right now. Yeah, I got a two piece now. Shit, I think they call them groupies now.